every day is a memorial day and um, at least if, if for recent tragic events people should be put on trial there should be some justice uh, recently on the 11th july was the anniversary or, or not the anniversary but the memorial day for uh, srebrenica insult then they lie down surely knowing what awaits we won't show the graphic executions that follow here but they did on Serb television. And now in the 17th of July it will be for the uh, Malaysian uh, flight that was shut down over eastern Ukraine. And when you think about it, that's a huge mass murdering of civilians. 298 uh, people lost their lives. In this region, an armed conflict between the Ukrainian government and armed groups is in progress. Therefore, lower levels of the airspace are restricted for civil air traffic. Flight MH17 is routed above this restricted airspace to waypoint Romeo November Delta in the Russian Federation. Until that moment, the flight proceeds normally. When flight MH17 is above the eastern part of Ukraine, a buck surface-to-air missile system fires a missile. It travels almost at three times the speed of sound and carries a 9N314M model warhead. Inside it is an explosive core surrounded by two mantles containing preformed iron fragments. Radar guides it to its target, where it is detonated by means of a proximity fuse. A buck surface-to-air missile can reach an altitude of 80,000 feet exceeding the flight altitude of flight MH17 by far. At 20 minutes and 3 seconds past 1, this warhead explodes to the left and above the cockpit of MH17. About 800 preformed fragments perforate the aeroplane. Many fragments were found in the bodies of the crew seated in the cockpit. Some of them had a bow tie or cubic shape. This impact, combined with the blast of the explosion, causes the cockpit and the business class section to separate. As it descends, the aeroplane disintegrates. None of the 298 occupants survived the crash. There are people who are guilty and it would be easy to track down them. You can imagine in this day and age where you can track down everything, When it departed from Tel Aviv, Israel, and headed towards Novosibirsk, Russia, the Iranian S-200 missile strike during military training exercises in Crimea. A Russian report confirmed an American military assessment that the S-200 missile overshot its target drone, which was destroyed successfully by an S-300 fired at the same time. The S-200 missile did not self-destruct and locked in on the Siberia Airlines passenger plane 150 miles further away and exploded into a ball of shrapnel shells 50 feet over the plane. The pilot of an Armenian plane nearby reported seeing the Russian plane explode before it crashed into the sea at about 1.54 p.m. Moscow time. The defense minister at the time, Oleksandr Kuzmuk, he resigned and just became a politician. Just like that. Once again, there is never no there's never a punishment, no justice really, and um, yeah, no um, public um, declaration of whatever happened. The Soviet ambassador to Japan says Russian search parties have found traces of an airliner crash off a Soviet island in the North Pacific, but Japan and the United States claim a Soviet fighter shot down the Korean Airlines jumbo jet with a missile. 269 people, including an Australian family, are believed to have perished. World tension has grown as Western leaders denounce the tragic incident as brutal, cowardly and barbaric. The United Nations Security Council is expected to meet tomorrow morning, Brisbane time, at the request of the United States and Japan, while Australia's Foreign Minister Bill Hayden says the incident will place a serious strain on our relations with Moscow. The Boeing 747 with 240 passengers and 29 crew was flying between New York and the Korean capital Seoul. It stopped for fuel at Anchorage in Alaska. First word something was amiss came when the jumbo disappeared off Japanese radar, west of the Soviet island of Sakhalin. 
a strategically sensitive area well guarded by the Russians. The Korean pilot had given no inkling that anything was wrong. His last contact was a seemingly routine request for a higher altitude. After initially denying any knowledge of the missing plane, the Russians changed their story. They admitted an unidentified jetliner had entered their airspace. Their version of events is that it ignored warnings from Soviet jets and continued on toward the Sea of Japan. American intelligence confirms the plane did stray into the Russian domain. The Americans say as many as eight Soviet fighters tracked flight 007 for two and a half hours. Then came the crunch. A 1960s vintage Sukhoi jet was ordered to fire a missile at the unarmed jumbo. A Soviet pilot reported visual contact with the aircraft at 1812 hours. The Soviet plane was, we know, in constant contact with its ground control. At 18.21 hours, the Korean aircraft was reported by the Soviet pilot at 10,000 meters. At 18.26 hours, the Soviet pilot reported that he fired a missile and the target was destroyed. The government of the Islamic Republic of Iran considers this a premeditated act of aggression and a premeditated cold-blooded murder. Well, I think it was an understandable accident to shoot and think that they were under attack from that plane. All 290 passengers and crew members aboard Iran Air Flight 655 died after the craft was shot down by two missiles from an American cruiser on duty in the Persian Gulf. Uh, and having on board uh, 290 passengers, uh, 66 children, and including uh, 50 women. There were electronic indications on Vincennes that led it to believe that the aircraft was an F-14. At 10.54 a.m., when the aircraft was about nine miles away, Vincennes fired two standard surface-to-air missiles, at least one of which hit at an approximate range of six miles. So how could so sophisticated a ship mistake a civilian airliner for the far smaller and faster F-14 fighter plane? How did the Vincennes mistake an Airbus for an F-14? The place is full of airplanes, flying all over the place. That radar screen gets very crowded. With regard to the Soviet comparing this to the KAL shootdown, there was a great difference. Our shot was fired as the result of a radar screen of a plane approaching it at quite a distance. Remember, the KAL, a group of Soviet fighter planes went up, identified the plane for what it was, and then proceeded to shoot it down. The real policy question is, should we pressure very strongly the states in the region to give us access to their airfield so that we can keep reconnaissance aircraft in the region 24 hours a day. The issue now is whether the horrifying images of this July 4th are going to raise new doubts about the intentions and the costs of our policy. Uh, based on everything that I have heard through open sources in the press, uh, I'm very proud of the actions that he's taken. Proud of the actions that he's taken. That's that. That's that's that, that, that's been on my mind, you know. Now between the 11th of July, the Srebrenica, and the coming 17th of 17th of July, and all the other days. I mean, I mean, the, the history is full of these events, but. Uh, we can only sort of uh, clear out the, the justice in, in the recent events and uh, this one really deserves more attention. So um, that's that. Um, think about it and take care, all the best.